Okay, can I have a show of hands of how many people knew about this before I get started? That's okay, because before I got started, I didn't know anything about it either, but right now I'm gonna give you the broad strokes, so now you know. So Indian boarding schools were spaces of trauma, especially for Native American children. At these schools, they were forced to, they were forbidden from speaking their tribal languages and they were forced to adopt Americanized names, basically so be, because the federal government wanted to speed up Native American assimilation across the country. So the Lincoln Institute was one of these schools. It was located at 324 South 11th Street in West Philadelphia. Its founder was Mary McHenry Cox. And um, some of the donors to the school included Anthony Drexel, who founded Drexel University, and George W. Childs, who owned the Public Ledger newspaper. So my goal for the summer was to find more information about these donors and more information about the school. So I traveled across the East Coast to different archives to see how I could piece together this story. So the Lincoln Institute was originally a white orphanage for boys who were sons of Civil War veterans in Philadelphia. So, but by 1881, the school decided, began to change into an Indian boarding school when children from the Carl Indian Industrial Training School visited that year, they started to begin this transition. So, and some of the sources I found over the summer included documents like the annual reports, which allowed me to chart the transition from an orphanage to an Indian boarding school over time. But the most important documents that I found were evidence of child abuse that occurred at the school that eventually led to the school's closure in 1898. So during that year, the school was investigated by the Indian Rights Association, which was another bo lobbying body that was in Philadelphia because of testimonies they received from Native American boys who were living at the school at the time. And after this investigation, the school closed. So why does it matter that there was an Indian boarding school in Philadelphia? Well, this is a history that like, we as a nation are grappling with now, such as the publication of documents like the Federal Indian Boarding School Sites that was published by, I think, the Department of Interior in 2020. So that document actually acknowledges the Lincoln Institute as an Indian boarding school, but it's, it's literally a point on a map. It doesn't tell the school's history, and that's what I'm gonna do in my thesis. But I wouldn't have gotten this far without the support I received from the Villanova community, so I'm thankful that now I have the opportunity to tell this story. So at CARA, like for the history for the CARA Industrial Training School, there's a lot of photos. For this place, not so much. So the picture on the left is the founder, Mary McHenry Cox. That was actually taken from her obituary that I found at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. The middle picture is a photo of one of the actual children. And he later wrote an autobiography about his life and his experience, particularly of the abuse that he encountered at the school. And that was published in 1903. And then that's just a picture of Anthony Drexel. He's the guy seated. And then George W. Childs is standing up. And he's actually holding a copy of the public ledger. And Drexel also like was a backer of the newspaper. Hey, uh, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, my question is kind of, can you, if you found any information on the kind of inspiration for founding it? And, and the reason I want to bring this question is like, were they trying to say, let's incorporate these savages into our culture, or were they trying to say, let's help these people? Um, I don't know if you have any information. So, pretty much, so as I was saying, it was originally a white orphanage, but literally, like, the white orphans were growing up and outgrowing the school, so then, I haven't figured out the context of why just yet, but for some reason, I'm pretty sure for the event known as like Philadelphia Day, celebrating the anniversary of um, the founding of Philadelphia, children from the Carl Indian Industrial Training School visited and stayed at the school. So they realized there was a whole other body of children that they could help. And um, Mary Henry Cox actually communicated very heavily with Richard Henry Pratt, who was the founder of Carl, and he helped get the like point them to agencies and place people on reservations who could connect the, who could send children to Philadelphia to, to make it an Indian boarding school. So can 
public on that. So would you say the primary reason, or one of the primary reasons, was economic um, for the repurposing of the school for Mrs. Bellamy Cox to make money? So that's an interesting take that I haven't really thought of. Basically, she would consider herself a philanthropist. And um, so she basically believed that like she was doing good, but this, this is not good. <laughs> and um, if you want to learn more, this QR code takes you to some stuff I wrote before I did this research. If you want to learn even more than that, you're going to have to wait until I'm done my thesis in the spring.